Hey, this is how to scream like John Mess. The first part of this video is just gonna be an analysis of what technique John is using. So if you don't care about the what or the why, you just wanna to get to the how, there's gonna be a timestamp in the description that'll link you right to this, the beginning of the tutorial. So here we go. Analysis. So, all right, so there's been some debate in the community as to what technique John is actually using. Is he using a vocal fry? or a false chord or some type of hybrid. So I think that he's using a hybrid of some sort of false chord scream with his voice inlaid within the scream. And so um, my argument is that uh, with vocal fry, you have an enormous control over your pitch. Like you can have very high highs, very low lows. And you also get uh, great breath control, like you can do super long screams, phrases, and um, you just have more stamina with your vocal fry scream. And John, I would argue, is limited in both his uh, duration and his range. So he only has a really limited range of how high he can go, how low he can go, but he sacrifices the range and the duration for power and tone. He gets such a great full tone. He sounds like he's yelling at the top of his lungs, which he, I hope he's not because that's really dangerous, but um, it sounds really badass what John is doing. And I just think vocal fry sounds a little weak sometimes. You know, I mean, it's just not my favorite type of screaming. So. To confirm this, I asked John via Twitter, I asked him, I asked him the exact same question I just asked, so I was like, hey John, um, what technique do you use, is it, a, is it vocal fry, is it false chord, or a combination of the two, you know, what is it? And he responded to me and he said, uh, it's a loud yell, I, re I really wouldn't recommend it. So it's a loud yell, alright. Well, he's probably joking. It's not just a loud yell. If it were a loud yell, then anybody could do it. But saying that it's a, a loud yell is really telling because vocal fry is the exact opposite of a loud yell. It's a really controlled uh, like sound. I mean, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a really controlled vocal fry sound. It's not a loud yell. So I'm ruling out vocal fry as his technique but that leaves false chord, but it's not exactly just false chord, it's his voice within a false chord scream. So it's like a hybrid technique. And in this tutorial, I'm trying to explain how to do it. I learned how to do it just by listening. I've never seen a, like a, a how-to video on how to false chord scream or anything. And I haven't really seen a video that explains effectively how exactly John Mess in particular screams. So I'm going to try to teach you how to scream like John Mess and just remember, be safe. If it starts hurting, stop. And I would, um, I would recommend maybe watching a false chord video first, or if you can't exactly get the tone that you want, or if it's just not like if the distortion isn't starting for you, try watching a false chord video first and see if that helps, then come back to this video. All right, so this tutorial is gonna be broken up into four parts. Part one, warm up. Part two, tone and distortion. Part three, pitch change. And part four, sing screaming. So I'm just gonna go through my warm up, what I usually do before I start screaming. And you always want to warm up, no matter what. Always warm up. Don't just go straight into screaming. It can really hurt your voice. So I usually get a teaspoon of honey, some local stuff, not some big brand stuff. Like, you know, the, if it comes in a little bear, it's probably just corn syrup. And so I take a teaspoon of honey, then I come out into my shed where my screaming takes place. And you want to get away from anyone who's going to call the cops on you. And um, I just have a cup of 
warm water, room temperature, warm water is just fine. And um, I start my vocal warm up. Now I was in theater for a long time, so I have a, a theater warm up that we used to do to warm up our projecting voice. So I'm just gonna do that one. If you wanna do it, if you wanna learn it, I'll put the words in the description for you. All right, and don't be embarrassed. You're gonna be making a lot of weird noises. It's just to get your voice warmed up. So. <laughs> Trinidad and the big Mississippi on the town of Honolulu on the lake of Titicaca. You want to really enunciate every word, get your mouth real loose and moving. So, Trinidad and the big Mississippi on the town of Honolulu on the lake of Titicaca. The polka de capital is not in Canada, rather in Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. What to do to die today, a minute or two till two. A thing distinctly hard to say, but harder still to do. You can rent a tattoo at a minute or two, or tat tattoo at two, and the dragon will come when he hears the drum at a minute or two till two today, a minute or two till two. Be bop 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 stop. Be bop be bop be bop be bop be bop be bop stop. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, aluminum linoleum, aluminum linoleum, cinnamon synonym, cinnamon synonym, toy boat, toy boat, beat you, beat you. She stood on a balcony, inexplicably mimicking hiccuping, while amicably welcoming him in. Unique New York, unique New York, you know you need unique New York. Fat black bugs in a wine barrel room. Barrel house kings with feet unstable. Sagged and reeled and pounded on the table. Pounded on the table. Beat an empty barrel with the handle of a broom. Boom, boom, boom with a silk umbrella and the handle of a broom. Boom, lay, boom, lay, boom, lay, boom. Mumbo jumbo will who do you? Mumbo jumbo will who do you? Mumbo jumbo will who do you? <coughs> Alright, so that's the vocal warm up. It's just to get our vocal fold uh, ready to go. All right, remember, always do warm up. It's the most important thing in screaming. Next, you wanna do maybe some breathing warm ups. Uh, if you were in band, you probably know this one where you breathe in as much as you can and then you let out a really controlled breath through a small space and that'll expand your lungs and get them ready for those really long screams, those really long phrases. So we do a, a few um, breath warm breath warm ups. And you want to be pressing the air out with your stomach, like you want to be flexing your abs while you're pressing your air out. That's where the core of the scream comes from. All right. And always, whenever you feel like you need a drink, get a drink. So that's our warm up done. If you want to take the warm up a little further, you can sing a clean song. I usually sing like a, a Panic at the Disco song, a really, really easy song, not too taxing. Not saying Panic at the Disco is easy, but you know, I usually sing like Nails for Breakfast, Tax for Snacks. That's one of their easier ones just to get my voice in the mode of like doing some hard vocal stuff. So you want to sing, sing a song, go for it. It'll only help you. Okay. So now part two, the distortion or the tone that we're wanting. And we said that John... Uh, uses some sort of false chord, but with his voice inlaid in it somewhere. So instead of doing a normal false chord uh, tutorial, like, you know, how everybody says, like the bratty teenager, you probably heard that before if you've seen a false chord video, just uh, like that. That's all air. That's no voice. But John uses voice. So what we're going to do, we're not going to start with the bratty teenager. We're going to start with a vowel. So, and I've found it that um, E is the easiest for me to start at. And, you know, once you play around with it, you might say A is your vowel. What I mean by that is to begin the distortion that we want, we start with our vowel sound E. And it's right up here, real high E, and my tongue 
I don't know if you can see, but the back of my tongue is almost on the roof of my mouth. So, e, and we're gonna be saying, yeah, yeah. That's the easiest thing to scream. Look, I need a drink. So, yeah. We need that E first. Let's start out at E. E. And the whole basis of this distortion comes from the fact that you are constricting your E sound while forcing more air through it than usual. And that constriction with the force is gonna vibrate your vocal folds and put that distortion above your E. So it's gonna sound good. Oh, and it's gonna be really hard at first. I've been doing this for a long time. You know, you're gonna not sound that great and that's fine. So what we're doing is we're taking our sound from the, uh, the back of our mouth and dumping it down into our chest. And by that I mean we're, we're pushing with our diaphragm, we're pushing air. We're not changing our volume. That's important. We're not going ee or whatever, you know. We're keeping the same volume, keeping our mouth essentially the same. Eee. It's really, we're just dropping the sound from the top of our tongue to the back of our throat. And we're not using our throat to make the sound. We're using our throat to control the sound. We're using our diaphragm to make the sound, okay? That's really important. If you, if you close your throat and you go, eee, that is not right. Don't do that. Eee. That's not good. You're gonna hurt your voice. What we're, what we're doing is we're using our diaphragm to push air through our E while keeping control of the E. So you wanna go, it's going to keep your E sound, but also force air through so you get the distortion. And that's the distortion that we want. That's going to be the basis of our power yell, scream, or false chord with voice, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to do E. And you want to. To get that ah, you're gonna to have to push a little bit harder from your diaphragm. We'll go through our vowels when we're doing our pitch change section. So we've got our E here. Take a drink. Whenever you feel it drying up, take a drink. E. Yeah. See when you can get that. That's good. All right, so when you can get the the E sound through your distortion, that's when you know you've got it. So we got E. All right, and so after I get my tone that I've found, and don't worry if you don't sound like me, if you don't sound like John, you know, listen to John on whatever I say is World Ocean. I mean, it, he doesn't sound anything like he does today. It comes with practice. Good tone, good sound, it all comes with practice. So, we're gonna take a drink. And we're gonna do the vocal warm up again, but screaming it this time. So, whatever you uh, do for your vocal warm up, if you wanna do my theater warm up, good, I'm gonna do that one. So here we go. Alright. Trinidad and the big Mississippi on the town of Olu on the Lake of Titicaca. The Poke in the capital is not in Canada, rather in Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. What to do to die today, a minute or two to do. A thing distinctly hard to say, but harder still to do. You can read a tattoo in a minute or two, or tattoo tattoo or two. And the dragon will come when he hears the drum in a minute or two till two today. A minute or two till two. Be my be my pet, be my be my pet, be my be my pet stop. Be my be my pet, be my be my pet, be my be my pet stop. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, aluminum linoleum, aluminum linoleum. Cinnamite, cinnamon, cinnamite, cinnamon. Toy bow, toy bow, beat you, beat you.
and you really, oh, you really start to feel it in your abs when you're pushing correctly. You feel it right here. She's still on a balcony, inexplicably mimicking hiccuping while abigail welcoming a man. Unique New York, unique New York, you know you need unique New York. Fat black bugs in a wine barrel room. Bell house kicks with feet unstable, sagging and reeled and pounded on the table. Pounded on the table, beat an empty barrel with the handle of a broom. Boom, boom, boom with a silk umbrella and a handle of a broom. Boom, lay, boom, lay, boom, lay, boom. All right. Mumbo jumbo, well, who do you? Mumbo jumbo, well, who do you? Mumbo jumbo, well, who do you? Okay, so we're all warmed up. And now let's talk about pitch change. So the way John gives the illusion of pitch change in his screaming is that he uses different vowel modes. It's a lot like singing, but you have to, more than singing, you have to keep that vowel mode in your head while you're uh, making choices of how to move your mouth while saying the words. So in his neutral, uh, his middle pitch, it's just regular, Don't you're not really thinking about any vowel modes. You're, if anything, you're thinking about the E still. E, e. Like that, that's regular, you know. Uh, you, uh, what's a lyric? This is his neutral tone. I'm feeling like Larva, I'm frumping like Martha. Now my voice is a little bit lower than John's, so uh, my screams are going to be lower. My neutral tone is going to be lower than his. So, if you got your neutral tone, if you're just starting out, just keep in your neutral tone for a while. It may actually hurt your voice to try to go high, low, high, low all at once when you're first starting out. And if you are a beginner to practice your neutral tone, I'd recommend doing the songs off of the Death Star album, Dance Gavin Dance, self-titled. Uh, he didn't really go highs or lows on that one. He just had one real uh, neutral tone on that one. And that's what that's the one I started out practicing. All right, so what do I mean by keeping your vowel mode in your in your mind? So our E is our neutral vowel. E! That's our, you know, that's the 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 tone that we use for most of our phrasing. But if we want to go up or down, we got to kind of change our vowel mode a little bit. So ah, the sound ah is inherently higher in pitch than e. And it it'll it's a good tool to help your voice go higher when you're screaming. So e ah and you're going to have to push a little bit harder from your diaphragm to get that sound. So we got uh, here a line from Suspended in This Disaster. Um, John Tabesco slang actually makes you. See, that's that's neutral, and he switches to ah. He overlays the ah sound above his next line. John Tabesco slang actually makes you Lego your ego. It's not Lego your ego. It's Lago your ago. Lago your ago. I don't know. But he's overlaying the ah sound over his normal neutral voice. So, lay on your ah, So, ah is gonna be our helper to get us to that high point. So, we got our ah is our high sound. Lay on your ah, And we keep our ah mouth for that. So, now let's get to our lows. So, when we do a low, we're gonna do the same thing as we do with the high, but with the o oh sound. The O is uh, inherently lower than the E, so we're gonna do O, 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 O. All right, so let's do a a line from Headhunter. I'll eat till I'm sleepy. The muffins are beefy. See how my my mouth changed? The muffins are beefy. It gets the O, O sound, and it's rounding out your your pitch so that it's inherently lower. And it comes from up here in the chest, you're gonna have, maybe have to push a little harder for the O as well. So, I'll eat till I'm sleepy, the muffins are beefy. 
you gotta whoop, change your whole posture, maybe put your head down a little bit. Where you're, where you're putting your head up for your ah, you're kind of putting your head lower for your oh. So just mess around with uh, sliding from ah to oh. And you can even do an exercise that I like to do is ye oh, yeah! to get your range, uh, to practice your range. So an example of another technique that John uses uh, sometimes uh, can be found in the song Man of the Year. When he does that really long, low, you, it's not a normal, you, it sounds different, right? So, um, and I think he uses this so he can draw it out longer. So here's a little trick for that one. It took me forever to get that and don't, don't worry. Your breath will come, your tone will come if you keep practicing. So anyway, in Man of the Year, he goes, Say I'm worth it, I'm your person, so well versed in all immerse in you. Woo. I probably didn't do it as long as he does it. It's really difficult. So if you noticed, it wasn't just you, and it wasn't even just you, it was your. It had a little R in there. And when you curl your tongue with the R sound, it helps you retain your air and do a longer scream. So if you do the little R with your tongue, er, you, you, like that, it'll help you draw it out more. Part four is sing screaming. Now this is a technique that John uses very sparingly because it's taxing on the vocal cords and you don't want to do it a lot. He uses it in Meat Fetish by Secret Band uh, where he goes, um, for my meat fetish, oh, 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 and in um, Gospel Burnout where he goes, oh, oh, oh. Now he uses it really sparingly because it uses a lot of voice and that's not good. That can hurt you a lot. So here I recommend this for uh, after you've after you've gotten your neutral tone perfectly, after you've gotten your pitch shift perfectly to where it doesn't hurt anymore, and then you could start doing this sing screaming. So get your water ready. All right. So we're actually going to start with. Uh, just singing it. Just singing the part. We'll do the part from Meat Fetish. Um, for my meat fetish, oh, oh, oh. Just to get your voice in that, that mode. And then we're gradually going to add some distortion with our chest while keeping the constriction of our vowels and our, our sounds with our throat. For my meat fetish, oh, 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 oh. Very taxing on the boat. It's actually a yell. That's what it is. It's a yell. And it's not good for you. But it sounds cool when you do it right. And it sounds cool in the songs. So you start with the voice. Oh. It's more of like you're trying to uh, drop your distortion down, but not as far as we normally do in our neutral scream. Oh! It's, it's dropping, but it's not, oh! it's not that full thing. So, oh, for my me fetish, oh, oh, oh! Instead of, yeah! Yo! It's a little more relaxed. For my me! Oh! Oh! See, my voice is already, just from practicing that, it's, it's going away. So you want to do that very sparingly. John does it sparingly in his songs. Just be careful with that one. Be careful with the sing screaming. And have your water right beside you at all times. 
All right, so let's look at everything we've learned today all together. We'll do a line from Meat Fetish. Uh, we got the sing screaming, we got the pitch shift, and we have the neutral tone and distortion. So keep an eye out for those. Keep an ear out for those. <clears throat> for my meat fetish, oh, 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 animal, cannibal, eating my mammalade, you taste like something I fuck. So we got our, our sing screaming, and then we did our highs, some lows, and some neutrals. So that was the tutorial. I know it was a little bit long for a tutorial, but I hope it helped you uh, start to learn how to scream like John Mess. So uh, in addition to that, I have a couple tips that I've learned along the way, and I'm gonna share those with you right now. And if you're struggling, hopefully they can help you out. So a lot of people say that they practice screaming in their car, which is not a good thing to do. For one, you're sitting down and that's constricting your diaphragm. So it's not gonna be as effective as it could be if you're standing up. So it's gonna maybe make your tone or your distortion sound a little off, maybe not exactly the way that you would like it to sound. And also, that's what I started doing. I started out like, you know, practicing in the car, singing, uh, screaming to Death Star, practicing in the car, and um, I would find that it, when I pushed too hard, my head, I would get headaches and I would get really dizzy. And if that's happening to you while you're screaming in the car, please stop. Being dizzy while you're driving is not a good idea. So if you can, just find somewhere, you know, like I have my shed, find somewhere that you could be standing up so you can have like your so you can have your diaphragm uh, at its full potential so yeah if you're if you're screaming while you're driving please I recommend to stop doing that and just find somewhere we can do it standing up another tip is that if you're singing and screaming at the same time or if you're going if you're really trying to develop your singing voice while you're also trying to develop your screaming voice, I would recommend not going so hard uh, while singing clean because I used to practice singing cleans a lot and I would sometimes just push my voice you know, to where uh, it started to hurt and I guess I just pushed my voice too far and then I found out that my singing voice was cracking all the time and my screaming voice was cracking all the time and I think I had damaged both of them by going too hard. So if you're singing and screaming, take it easy when you're singing. Don't, don't push too hard while you're singing clean or try to find a different scream technique that's sustainable while you're singing cleans as well because I, I don't think this one's very sustainable why you're singing cleans. I mean, John doesn't sing cleans and that's, I think that's for a reason because this screaming technique takes a lot out of your voice. So another tip is my progression that I, you know, I started out screaming uh, would be a good one to mirror because it's, it starts with the easiest stuff. So you want to start with your uh, with Dance Gavin Dance self-titled album or the Death Star album because that's the easiest one to learn on I think because all he does is his neutral voice like I said in the tutorial and then I would move on to DBM2 because he is just just then starting to come off of his uh, break to where he had to take a break because of his Lyme's disease and he uh, he changed up his technique a little bit so it's 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 a little bit better than Death Star. So uh, trying to practice with DBM2 next will be good. It has the longer phrasing and the more complex lyrics. And then I would move on to artificial artificial selection and mothership, and that's when he uh, started incorporating that pitch change where he kind of. Well, he didn't start then, but that's when you should start uh, incorporating the pitch change because. He, he started going high, low, but uh, after that, 
then you should try acceptance speech and instant gratification because before Mothership, he was going all over the place with his uh, pitch change. It sounded crazy and cool. So um, then that should be the next uh, logical progression. And finally, if you're feeling really confident, if you got everything else down perfectly, move on to Secret Band. And uh, I'm still struggling with the Secret Band songs. They are insane. I don't know how he ever did Secret Band live. It's, it's, it's just crazy, crazy taxing on the voice. And after a DGD set, that's crazy. But um, yeah, so uh, the progression is Death Star, DBM2, Artificial Selection, Mothership, Acceptance Speech, and uh, Instant Gratification, and then finally, Secret Band. So hopefully that helps you out. Don't try to like jump into secret band because that's you're gonna hurt your voice probably if you're a beginner. But um, <clears throat> okay, another tip is uh, sometimes you will lose your voice after a good uh, screaming session, or like the next day you might have a little hoarseness, and that's perfectly fine. It's just your voice is getting used to the harshness of screaming. But if you're experiencing any pain, please stop. Because pain is not good. Especially if you're experiencing pain while you're screaming. If you're experiencing a little bit of pain after you scream, that could be okay. But if you're, you're, uh, if you're hurting while you're screaming, please stop um, and go back and reevaluate your technique so you can find out what you're doing wrong and eliminate it so that you're not hurting yourself. Please don't hurt yourself. I don't want you guys to hurt yourselves. All right, my final tip is just some things that uh, I would recommend while learning how to scream. So like I said in the video, honey is good. Start out with some honey. Always have warm water or room temperature water with you at all times. When you feel you're getting dry or you feel it scratchy, get a drink. And uh, always do vocal warm up. Always, always, always do vocal warm up. And so when you're done screaming, uh, I recommend some tea. Tea is great. And I have this throat coat tea. That's awesome. If you can find anything with slippery elm, like I had some slippery elm lozenges, that's great. It helps your voice immensely. And so even putting a little bit of honey in that, it's awesome. And uh, after you're done screaming, try not to talk so much. Uh, don't put any extra stress on your voice that doesn't need to be there. Um, and you might find that your voice gets deeper after screaming, and that's pretty cool. It's just, I don't know, it's cool to me. And um, so yeah, I think that's about it for my tips and stuff. Um, I hope you liked the video. I hope it helps you and I hope you stay safe and um, just remember that your, your breath, your duration, your tone, and your stamina will all come with practice. You can't get anywhere without practice. So practice, 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 practice. And if you have any questions, if you think you might be doing something wrong, uh, I'm not a vocal coach, but I can try to help you with what I know about what I taught myself. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. And if you have anything about, you know, if you think I'm doing it wrong, if you think I might hurt myself, if you know more than me, please tell me. Please tell me because I don't want to like mess up my voice forever. But so far I haven't had any problems. I've only gotten better at screaming. I've been doing it for three years. And you know, that's the only key is practice. So good luck, stay safe, and thanks for watching.